God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining me. This is Gail Manizak with City Changers Illinois. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, the dark, dark night of the soul. And actually, this is just a bit about what I'm going to talk about because um, as I study and as I have went through things myself, I want to put a lot more into this. And there is a lot more that should go into this, but I'm going to share a little bit today on the dark night of the soul. This experience, it describes a place that the greatest of Christians have, have suffered from time to time. It was this uh, spiritual place that actually provoked David to soak his pillow with tears. Amen. And it was this place that where Jeremiah... Uh, he got that the name, the weeping prophet. It was this place that so afflicted Martin Luther that his melancholy threatened to destroy him. So this is not, or this is no ordinary stage of depression, but it is a depression that is actually linked to a crisis of faith, a crisis that comes when a person senses the absence of God or um, experiences a feeling of abandonment by God. And we know that God does not abandon us. Let me say that right up front here, that God says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But we do experience different things, everything from valleys to wildernesses to mountaintop experiences. Praise the Lord. This particular experience deeply and deeply affects us in our senses in regarding to the presence of God in our senses only amen or in our emotions or in our feelings however you want to say it so spiritual depression is real it can be acute and we ask a, a question how can a person amen how can a person of faith experience such a spiritual low but you know whatever provokes it it does not take away from its reality our faith is not a constant action it is mobile it it is um how can i say it it hesitates it wavers the bible says our faith can waver we move from faith to faith and then in between we we might have periods of doubt when we cry out, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Just like the father did that was had brought his son to Jesus to, um, well, first to the disciples who tried to cast out a devil and couldn't, and then to Jesus who did cast out the devil. So anyway, in saying that, we may also think that the dark night of the soul is something completely incompatible with the, the fruit of the spirit. Not only that of faith, but also that of joy. So once the Holy Spirit has flooded our hearts with joy unspeakable, how can there be any room in that place for such a darkness like this? It's important for us to make a distinction between the spiritual fruit of joy and the basically a cultural concept of happiness a christian can have joy in his heart while there's still spiritual depression in his head amen the joy that we have sustains us through these dark nights and is not quenched by spiritual depression the joy of the christian is one that survives all downturns in life or anything in life that would be negative. So in writing to the Corinthians in his second letter, actually Paul commends to his readers the importance of preaching and of communicating the gospel to people. But then in the midst of that, he reminds the church that the, the treasure we have from God is a treasure that is contained not in vessels of gold and silver, but in what the apostle calls jars of clay. So for this reason, he says that the surpassing power belongs to God, not to us. 
And then immediately after this reminder, Paul says, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Second Corinthians chapter four. So this scripture indicates the limits of depression that we experience. The depression may be profound, but it's not permanent, nor is it fatal. And, and notice the, that Paul describes our condition in a variety of ways. He says that we are afflicted, we're perplexed, we're persecuted, we're struck down. These are powerful images that describe the conflict that Christians must endure. But in every place he describes this experience, he also describes at the same time its limits. Afflicted, but not crushed. Amen. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. So we have this pressure to uh, bear, but the pressure, though it is severe, does not crush us. We may be confused. We may be perplexed, but that low point to which perplexity brings us does not result in complete and total despair. Even in persecution, as serious as it may be, we're still not forsaken. And we may be overwhelmed and we may be struck down as Jeremiah spoke of, yet we have room yet for joy. We think of the prophet Habakkuk, who in his misery remained confident that despite the setbacks he endured, God would give him feet like Heinz feet, feet that would enable him to walk in high places. So then there were other places that the Apostle Paul, in writing to the uh, Philippians, also gives them the admonition to, quote, be anxious for nothing, telling them that the cure for anxiety is found on your knees. So that's the peace of God that calms our spirit and dissipates anxiety. And then again, we can be anxious and nervous and worried without finally submitting to ultimate despair. This coexistence of faith and spiritual depression is paralleled in other biblical statements of effective um conditions. We're told that it is perfectly legitimate for believers to suffer, say, in grief. It's a normal thing, actually. Our Lord himself was a man of sorrows and acquainted, acquainted with grief. Though grief may reach to the roots of our souls, it must not result in bitterness. Amen. So grief is legit a legitimate emotion, and, and many other emotions are also. At times, it, grief could even be a virtue. But there must be no place in the soul for bitterness. So then we see that it is a good thing to go to the place of mourning. But, but even in mourning, that low feeling must not give way to any hatred, anger, bitterness, any, anything like that. So in closing, the presence of faith gives no guarantee. Let me say this, hear me now. The presence of faith gives no guarantee of the absence of spiritual depression. But the dark night of the soul always gives way to the brightness of the noonday light of the presence of God. Amen. We can always count on God. His word is sure. When he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, he may have lifted his presence from us to uh, put, allow us to go through a time of trial or whatever. But it, it, no matter what we feel, the Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us. He is there. I almost want to say he is there standing somewhere in the shadows 
Amen. He is there. Whether we can feel him, whether our emotions um, are sensing him or our hearts are sensing him, he is there. When we're going through our darkest trial, our deepest troubles in life, he is there.